Hello there and welcome to my second explanation. This time we're going to be looking at energy changes and equilibrium in C7. Now first let's focus in on here because we need to know about bond energies. Now a reaction that gives off energy, usually in the form of heat, is called an exothermic reaction. Think of it exo, like a skeleton on the outside, or exit, well, yeah. And then endothermic is gains energy. Um, not really a way to remember that one. Now, in a reaction, bonds are broken and bonds are formed. So, bond breaking is an endothermic reaction because energy, energy is needed to break those bonds. When bonds are created, those bonds smash into each other, which releases a bit of energy. So that's an exothermic. So by looking at the bond energies created and bond energies broken, we can decide whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Now in this example here, we can see that I'm not actually sure what this is. Explain to me what this is. I think it's ni no, it's not nitric acid. Nitrogen, I don't know. Okay, but that's reacted to just give normal nitrogen and hydrogen molecules. Now here, which bonds are broken? If we look at the diagram of how what what happens, there are two lots of whatever that is. Right, so that's them. Right? Now those bonds are broken to form just the nitrogen and the hydrogen. Now you'll be given a bond energy table here. So we know that the N to H is 391. That's the energy. So as they're broken, now let's count how many of those there are. There's one, one, two, three, there's three on each, yeah? You can see that clearly, because there's two molecules. So, you times 391 by six, right? There's six connections in total, and that gives 2,346. They're the only bonds that are broken here. Now there are several bonds that are formed, because here, no nitrogens are actually joined to each other here, are they? The nitrogens are the big black blobs. Here, they're formed, yeah? One molecule is formed, so 945, because there's only one. As you can see from our table, it's 945. Now we know that hydrogen bond bonds are formed as well, because actually there are no hydrogens that are connected to each other here, and they're formed, three of those are formed, see, here, so it's three times 436, which is 3008, those two numbers add together, add together gives 2253. Now, you then have to take away the energy of making bonds, no, take, take away the energy from breaking bonds, away from the energy from making bonds. That gives a negative total of minus 93. If it's a minus, that means the reaction is, um, what have I done here? Um, let me have a look. Yeah, it's endothermic. And technically, there shouldn't be a minus there at all, so just ignore that. So it's 93. What did I do there? So it's making bonds take away breaking bonds. There you go. So, that graph basically represents what happens in an exothermic reaction, because energy is lost. But you still need an activation energy to make the reaction happen at all at all. Otherwise everything will be reacting with each other. So, 
dynamic equilibrium and reversible reactions are the thing that comes up a lot. A reversible reaction is basically is when the products can be turned back into the reactants and the reactants can turn, be turned into a product. Well, that's dynamic equilibrium in a way. Dynamic equilibrium is when the reactants and products keep going back and forth, back and forth. Um, so the overall um, result is just nil because no products are created and no reactants are created. Now this is only in a closed system where none of the products can escape. Okay, so just going back and forth having no effect whatsoever. That's basically what that says. Now, strong and weak acids. Apparently this is a classic exam question, so this is exciting. Explain the difference between strong and weak acids. Now, in a strong acid, they just ionise completely in water, dissolve basically. That, so that's because they're strong. However, if it's a weak, if it's a weak acid like a carboxylic acid, they won't ionise completely. Therefore, it's said to reach an equilibrium because, well, by reaction, because the reaction is to the left. Right, there are more. There's more. Um, what's that? Um, ethanoic acid, yeah, that's ethanoic acid. There's more ethanoic acid than the H plus and CH3CO2 minus ions. So it's said to reach an equilibrium. And what have I put here? An equilibrium is said to be created because the acid doesn't have enough energy to ionize completely. I don't know why I put a 2 there. So it keeps going back and forth, giving an overall effect of nil. And, well, that's about it, really, for that one. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.